Hey guys, welcome back to Unifor's Live Q&A, Volume 6. On today's show, I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Clifford Coetzer, all the way from Jeffreys Bay in South Africa, Brew. Uh, and then we also have a special guest on today's show, another man, myth, and legend, Paul Burnett, a.k.a. PB. Yeah. Foiling royalty, OG. <laughs> So on today's show, we're going to be discussing tail designs. Uh, we get a lot of questions about that uh, and how it relates to the front wing, um, a little bit about shimming, and a little bit about our latest uh, three-pack of tails because uh, it's a little bit confusing. On the surface, they all look identical. or they all have the identical outline. However, the profiles are very different. So we're going to hand it over to Cliffy um and so first question i have for today is can you just explain a little bit about um tail stabilizers or tail stabs um just give us a general overview what they do um and what makes a good one and what doesn't so yeah with with tail stabilizers i mean they do exactly what what the name implies is they stabilize the foil and they do this in two two main areas um the one is where they act like a almost like, like like a weather vane so that increases your stability and the other reason is they um counteract the forward pitching of the of the front foil so the, those are the two main areas where your stabilizer comes in um by having a well matched tail stabilizer to your front wing is um ideal because you keep your drag down and your performance naturally increases. So to try and match your tail to your front wing, um, in the early days, it's not as crucial. Um, you don't really feel the, the differences unless it's dramatic. But as you increase in your, your foiling um, journey, your, your tail stabilizer starts to become more and more critical. So yeah, as you become more advanced, it's important that you understand what your tail is doing, what you are feeling in the foil, and how to tune your foil according to what you're trying to achieve. So tell us a little bit about uh, front wing versus tail or tail stabilizer. Um, if you're going like a high aspect versus a mid aspect, um, depending on the discipline, would you be choosing a different tail? Or is it kind of one size fits so all? Um, many tails can work across a broad range of different foils. So the general consensus is if you're going for all out efficiency, then you want to use a high aspect tail, um, just for low drag. If you are on a uh, toe in, then you're doing very high speed. Then ideally you want something with a little bit of a kick up on the tails just to give you more your stability. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's what it boils down to at the end of the day is uh, are you aiming for efficiency? Then you'll, it's, it's about compromise, is, is you'll tend to um, have a little bit more of a sensitive foil. If you're aiming for um, all out speed, then you want that locked in feeling. Then you'll generally have a, a, a tail that has either a little bit of um, your stability um, just to increase your your overall stability of the foil. But yeah, as, as you said earlier, you, you can pretty much use, within reason, um, um, you can interchange quite a lot on your tail sizes. Um, what I suggest is for guys who are who are bigger, obviously to use bigger tails, um, smaller guys can use smaller tail stabilizers. Uh, so Cliffy, um, I just think it might be a good idea uh, to explain your to some of our listeners so your is the um axis drawn from the head from the from the tip of your head to your toes so if you draw a line down that way that is the axis that your your is on so if you want your stability you need a surface that is in the vertical position so a tail that has either drop down tips or tips going up so That'll what are the difference between drop down tips and up tips? I'm giving away my secrets now. 
<laughs> but no, um, no, I mean, it's not really a secret, but so up gang tips. Remember your tail stabilizer is pushing downwards. So if you, if you were to turn it this way, you know, now this becomes your, your, your lifting profile. So downward or rather put it this way, upward tips. What I have found over the years is with upward tips for pumping are terrible because you're now trying to make a surface that is pushing downwards. So when you pump, you're actually pushing off this tail. So it's almost like climbing on an elevator that's going downwards. So imagine an elevator is coming downwards and you climb on it and now you try and jump, but that elevator is already going downwards. You, you can't jump. Whereas imagine how the elevator is going up, but you jump on it, you can jump even higher. So, so your tail stabilizer is going downwards already. Now you're pushing on a surface that's going down already to try and generate lift. So what happens is you get um, span wise flow and you, you end up generating a huge vortex off this tip if this tip comes upwards. Whereas you can imagine if the tail is this way around, is you're now actually scooping the water. That's why you'll see our shiv, shunt, and shang tails. The tips just kick that little bit down so that you don't get that inefficiency. This tail, if you try and pump it, it's an absolute dog because all your energy just goes into sc scooping a massive vortex off the tip. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible tail to, to climb into pumping. However, if you have to use this in, in towing, you know, this is, I'm talking about the, the, the vertical stabilizer. This tail is very stable in the yaw axis. Yeah, that, that used to be my go-to tail when we were, when we were towing. Mm. I really liked it. But like you said, you try and get off the wave and pump to the next one. It's really, really difficult. Yeah, got no chance. Yeah. Yep. So... Is there such thing as a good tail versus a bad tail, or is it kind of specific to what you're trying to do, what you're trying to get out of it? Like, what, what yeah, are the general 100%. kind of right? Completely. Uh, you, you, your tail has to fit your objective. So, and it also has to fit your skill level. Um, in the early days, I hated a tail that didn't have your stability. I just found them too squirrely and too too all over the place, and I didn't like them. And it's only now in the recent years that I'm riding um, smaller waves and now I'm starting to actually enjoy them. Um, whereas previously I really wanted that because I was always towing into bigger waves. I always wanted that locked in feeling. Whereas now I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards flatter tails with, with less yaw stability and actually really enjoying them now. Okay, yeah, so, so, sorry, guys. Go I was going to say, I, I'm pretty much the same. I, I remember I tried the – when I first got on Unifoil, uh, I tried the race and I just hated it because it was just drifting everywhere and the tail. All over the place. The, the yaw instability just did my head in. Uh, and Because, as you know, um, as part of the Lost Boys, we're, we're, we're just towing all the time. And so we've got that extra speed. So I, I was loving uh, that wing you showed before, the Flare 14. Um, and uh, – and that, so that was my go-to, like uh, Toby said before. But uh, I've I've gotten on the uh, the shiv and the shunt that I really and I really like those two. Um, and obviously, we'll get into how those two work uh, along with the shank uh, a little uh, in in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I uh, and they just got the tiniest of uh, of of down tip, but it, it does enough to to stop it yawing. It's amazing that that tiny little down tip. So again, you know, that's that's with the down tip going downwards, not going upwards, and that's that, that's why I way prefer a tip going downwards than I do upwards. Um, yes, they, they they do tend to get more damaged easier because you know they're going downwards, they're getting hit hit on the ground and whatever. But I think the the advantages are outweigh the the, the negatives. You know, if you if you care for the tail. Um, the, the advantages of having your tips going downwards are far better. So, but is, yeah, re really cool how that tiny little tip makes such a difference. You should actually take one of those tails and cut those tips off and feel the difference. It's well, Patrick cut his off, but he likes it. Yeah, yeah, like how uh, much it loosens up the yaw. Yeah, Tom, Tom told me as well that he, he's gone now, he's using it as an 11, it's going from 13 to 11. 
And uh, we're going to get into Chop Shop uh, in, in a little bit and some tips on how guys can approach that. Uh, I know that um, Glenn over in Hawaii, um, he's been not only cutting the tips off, but he's also reducing the uh, cord as well and and kind of going from a straight line to kind of inverted, like a, like a splay. Um, and he said he was liking that as well. It's really interesting. And and that's part of the reason why we we give three tails so you can experiment and not not screw up the tail that you really like. Well, Glenn Glenn has a penchant for doing some weird things. Remember what he did to that viper where he cut the um yeah uh, the like half the tip off. It was uh, I don't know how it went for him, but Franken uh, it was Frankenstein. It yeah, he fully did, didn't he? <laughs> he said he liked it better. Oh, look out. Oh, there um, we go. Got the light back on. So, Cliff, the next question I have here mm -hmm. is um, tail profile or thickness. Is it Can you be too thin or can you be too thick? Because if, if you follow the logic of <clears throat> efficiency, you'd, you'd, you'd think, oh, I, wanna, I want my, my tail stabilizer to be as thin as possible. But then you've got the issues with flex. Um, is, is there a too thin or is there a too thick? Like would would be would going too thick then slow you down and defeat the purpose of having an efficient tail? Pretty much. Um, especially it depends which category of rider you're talking about. If you're talking about the the average Joe, <clears throat> then you know the, the extremities are not too bad. But when you're talking about guys who are trying to get as fast as they can, then you, you want a thinner tail. Um, but then also depends what material it's made from. So, especially when it comes to pumping, because you are driving off your, 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 your tail. And if your tail has got flex, then your efficiency will suffer. So, to try and make your tail as stiff as possible um, is important. And obviously, your, your stiffness is in relation to your thickness of your tail. So, it's a fine balance. You know, if you go too thick on your tail, now your drag increases, but your stiffness goes up. So to get that proportion just right, we find roughly six millimeters in G10 works works really well. Um, you can go either way, just a little bit, but roughly six millimeters in thickness is is working really well for us. Right. So for the for the guys out there who are looking to to to, to experiment with tails and they don't know where to start um what should they be looking for like say <clears throat> let, let's let's do sure. example prone like somebody wants to prone surf what tail should he be looking for and then someone wants to do a downwinder and then someone who wants to just pump around forever like wh what should they be looking for in their tail so it depends on the front wing so if, if we take our range for example with with the vipers the vipers have a little bit more of a forward pitching moment then if you compare it to, to, to Eric's wing, to the progression. So the Vipers like a little bit more tail stabilizer. So they like a little bit more down foot pressure or not down foot pressure, um, tail stabilizer pressure on the rear because they've got a little bit of a stronger forward pitching moment. So I personally like more shim. So I'd ride the shunt with a number two shim on a Viper 130, but I am 100 kilos. So if somebody was a little bit lighter, they could go down to a one shim. So for the for the vipers, um, a little bit more tail stabilizer. For the progression, the, the progression has a very low forward pitching moment. Uh, it's a very efficient foil. So you don't want to shim too much on it. I mean, now the guys are going to negative shims. So so with the progression, if you can get away with riding with a zero shim, you know that's like the ultimate. If you've got the skills to go to a minus, even better. But as you go less and less on your shim, the more twitchy the foil is going to become. But ideally, um, you want to always ride with as little shim as you can. Because the more shim you got, the slower your foil is going to be. Um, so it's it's completely a point of experimenting. <clears throat> go out for a session, ride, look at the conditions, look at how big your swell is. Um, when you climb on a wave and it depends how fast you're going. If you're going fast and you feel um, having to lean backwards to to keep the, stop the nose from pitching forward, then you need more shim. If you find that you're constantly trying to push the nose down as you go through your speed range, 
then you, you need less shim. But now there's there's another point of <clears throat> it also depends where you put your mast on your board. So that also affects um, how you're going to be coming out of the water. So what I find with a lot of guys is, especially newbies, is they're not used to that feeling of the moment the board starts moving in the water, they're lying down and they're going to get up to their feet and this thing lifts up. That isn't because you've got too much tail. That's just because your center of gravity is further back or because your mast is very far forward and that thing lifts up. So you need to be at, at the point where you're already competent and getting up onto the board comfortably. If the board keeps lifting you all the time, then you need to move the mast back on, on the board just so you can keep it down. Once you're up and flying, now you need to feel um, through the speed range. As you go faster and faster and faster, you know, what is your foot pressure like? If you are, um, for prone guys, there are quite a few ways to tune your foil um, when, you, when you're first starting out. If you are finding that the foil is that the board is constantly lifting as you're trying to get to your feet, I would suggest moving the foil further back on the on the on the board before you start changing shims. Because what you'll find is when the foil is far forwards on the board, it, it'll it'll lift you up a lot easier. So move the foil further back. If you're struggling to get the nose up, then move the foil further forward. But through the speed range you need to feel, is your foot pressure changing? Are you having to lean further and further back the faster you go? If you are, then you need to change your your um, shim size. Um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much what it is. That makes a lot of sense because the biggest question we get um, as we just released our three-pack, um, and like I was saying, they've all got the same same outline and three different profiles and for those that don't know um the shank is the front is a back foot pressure the shiv is a neutral and the shunt is a front foot pressure so the biggest question we get is wouldn't that just be like shimming so wouldn't wouldn't it just mean i don't have to shim and um and then also with the mast forward and backwards like you were explaining can you explain a little bit about why you designed it like that and how it's different from shimming so, so as you said, the, the three tails have the same surface area. They have the same front shape and the same top shape. So the only thing that changes is the profile. And what this does is they change through the speed range. So I could take, for example, the rear foot pressure stabilizer and shim it to have front foot pressure. But as you go through the speed range, what you'll find is that your front foot pressure will start to back off. Whereas if you had the shunt, which is the front foot pressure stabilizer, and you shimmed it, and as you go through the speed range, the front foot pressure would increase and increase and increase. Does that make sense? Yep. So yes, you can shim that tail stabilizer to a degree where you have front foot pressure, but as you go through the speed range, your front foot pressure would back off. So if you're riding and you find, you know, I've got too much front foot pressure, um, there's two things you can do, depending on which tail stabilizer you're using. If you're using the shunt, you can go to the shiv, or you can back off on your your shim. So It feels. Because it's going to be faster if you don't shim, isn't it? Like if you've got, if you've got a zero shim in, um, irrespective of which rear tail wing you've got, it's always going to be faster than if you throw in, well, throw in a... Um, uh, uh, a positive shim, uh, but whereas the negative ones will go faster, will they? Uh, yes, your, your, your drag, uh, I think, to one degree or two degrees is, is less. So one thing that I'm dying to try is the shunt tail, which is your front foot pressure, with a negative shim. Yeah. Um, especially like on a Viper 90 on a big day, what I found is with a two degree, it's, it's way too much front foot pressure for me. Um, yeah, but I mean, we we don't get that many big days, you know, that often. So, 
yeah, I'm dying to 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 back off on the shim and get down to a, a, a one shim because I just found a number two shim on the Viper 90 it was it's a, it's a crazy front foot pressure, you know, trying to hold this foil down. So, which is yeah, amazing which when it's only 90 square inches, isn't it? Exactly, it's a tiny little foil, um, but you've just got way too much sta tail stabilizer. So either I need to go to smaller tail stabilizer um, or back off on the shim. So that that's the plans for for this winter is is to get to um, less shim or, or less tail um, for that foil. So yes, Paul, exactly that. If you can, you always remember the the shiv shunt and shank come with a preset of two degrees on the on the tail stabilizers. Okay. So when you put them onto your fuselage with a zero shim, they're already at two degrees. Right. Okay. So if you can go less on your shim, um, I don't know if our negative shims are available yet, but you can download them um, on Thingiverse. If you search for Unifoil, you'll find the negative shims. So you can download them and 3D print them. I'll put a link. Okay. I'll put a link in this um, in the video. But they're almost ready. They're almost ready. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So. And they're going to be white. Yeah. So you know what? Whether you've uh, got the positive Onto ones the or the or the negative have ones. You, have you seen the light? <laughs> in the white. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to to, to get feedback. Um, but I've had quite a few riders riding a zero shim, and they're like. You know, can we go negative? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, that's why we've made them. Um, especially if you're riding slower or, or smaller waves, um, you can get maximum efficiency. You know, you want to try and have, like I always say, as little shim as possible. And I mean, now that the guys are going to negative shim. So that's going to be interesting to to get feedback on, on, on what everybody feels to that. So Cliffy... What would be the difference if someone was to put their mast, like a lot of guys ride with the mast as far forward as possible and they <clears> ride <throat> neutral? Like I know that's the way Eric likes to ride. He doesn't use a shim. He uses zero shim and that he's wanting negative shim. <clears throat> what would be the difference between that and putting your mast all the way back and putting a lot of shim if you're looking for that front foot pressure? Um are you, uh, it would one be more efficient and the other one, yes. but then you still get the same kind of feeling with the so, front foot. So what would happen is um, with, with having the mask all the way forwards <clears throat> and having very little shim on your tail stabilizer, you don't have a very broad speed range. The moment you start to speed up like fast, your foil is going to pitch forward. So if you're within your speed range, you'll be fine. But if, you, if you're going out in, in bigger days and you're going to be doing drops or if you're in bigger conditions, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to hold it. So you'll need to move your mast back <clears throat> just a fraction and have a little bit more tail stabilizer to isn't, stop that forward pitching moment. Isn't the other reason why guys like putting their mast all the way forward is that it's going to mean that their foot um, – will be behind the mast rather than uh, possibly in front of the mast, which gives a more surfy feel? Yes. Um, in, 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 in terms of feel, um, yeah, you can drive with your back foot. But in terms of flight, your, your efficiency, in, ter in terms of efficiency, moving the mast forward and having a little tail stabilizer is always going to be more efficient. But it's only going to work up until a certain speed. And the moment you cross that cross that speed, you're going to find the foil is going to want to pitch forward, and and and, and again, that, that's why it's so important to to start to to shim and to tune your foil for the day's conditions. Some days you'll have bigger conditions, bigger surf, and you're going to be doing you know down the down the line runs at high speed, and if you haven't tuned your foil for that, you're going to find that you're going to have to start leaning back trying to keep the nose of the foil up. So, yeah, uh, according to your day's conditions will depend on how you're going to shim your, your, your rig. So, Cliff, let's just say that someone wants to start experimenting with, um, with, with moving their mast up and, up and down in the box. 
if they let's say their master's in the middle and they use a two shim and they want to push put their mast all the way forward would you advise them to lower the shims a degrees or yes yes because yep. if your mast is here and your board is here <clears throat> and you're moving your mast forwards in the box and you're staying on the same place on your board you are essentially moving your center of gravity behind so now your weight is doing what your tail would normally be doing so now you need less tail you need less um tail pressure so you need to back off on your on your shim so now you're going to be um more efficient because you're going to have less shim on your tail and, and that would be the opposite sensitive rig the opposite yeah, if you wanted opposite. to go back so yep. if you want to go all the way back, then you put more tail shim. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the questions we get a lot, uh, you know, we have shops and people kind of complain. Uh, we only sell the G10 three pack as a three pack. We don't sell them individually. And a lot of people come in, they might have listened to Josh Koo or Tom or or Eric and say they like the shiv. A lot of a lot of guys like the shiv because it's a neutral tail. But having said that, we get a lot of guys like in the shunt and the shank as well. Um, and and Josh summed it up really well in his interview where he said, "What I like might not necessarily be what you like, but nevertheless, people kind of just want to ride what you know the, the the top guys are riding, and it's fair enough." But can you can you explain why you made three that look identical with different pressures and why people need to buy the three pack and why we did it as a three pack. It's not to piss everyone off, but there's, there's a method behind the madness um, of, of why it's, you need to. It's sort of, of, of like when, when you first, first started foiling, when you first started foiling, you just jumped up and you just stayed in a straight line. You didn't go left, right. You didn't go up, down. You didn't do anything. You just literally just stood in the line. And then as you got better and better, you started to push that boundary box and you went a little bit higher and a little bit lower. And you started to go a little bit left, a little bit right. And you started making that box bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually you could start doing these like turns. And so you, you, you pushed your, your boundary box bigger and you only get to a certain part or, or a certain size. And to push that box even further, you now need to start exp experimenting with your gear. How can I do a tighter turn? How can I go faster? How can I, whatever it is you, you're trying to achieve. And that is why it's important to, to use the correct gear, um, tune your gear according to the day's conditions. Um, so yeah, yeah that, that's pretty much why we brought out these three tails is to increase your understanding of the foil. What is it doing? Why is it doing it? How do I change it according to what I want? Because as you said, not everyone's going to want to ride the exact same rig. I've had two guys ride the exact same rig. As I said before, they come off and the one guy says to the other, oh, if I just had that little bit more tail um, back foot pressure. And the guy's like, you mean front foot pressure? And it's like, no, back foot pressure. So it's two different riding styles. And one guy likes this, one guy likes that. So just because Josh Koo's riding this doesn't mean you're going to like it. Or no, it doesn't mean that you have the same capabilities as what he does. Maybe you don't have the same weight. So your wing loading is different. So your shim is going to be different. So yeah, I, I keep saying super important to have a, a foil that you can adjust. You, you get brands that, that make foils that aren't adjustable. I don't really agree with it because someone who weighs 50 kilograms who rides a Viper 90 is not going to have the same setup as someone who has 100 kilograms who rides a Viper 90 the wing loading is double. So it's, it's a completely different setup. So you need to be able to change um, not only tail stabilizers, but also tail stabilizer angles. Um, yeah, to me, super important. Yeah, and another reason on top of that as well is uh, a lot of guys like to go to the chop shop, cut the tips off, like we we're talking about, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if you, okay. if you look at the price of the G10s, they, they, they're super cost effective. If you take what it costs for three of them, um, you know, they, they don't break the bank and, and to experiment with them. And like I say, it, the foiling to me is, is this um, journey. 
and it's it just feels it's an incredible journey and the, the more you're on it and the more you explore with it the, the more enjoyable it becomes and tuning is 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 a, is a huge part of that journey yeah absolutely imagine and imagine, imagine if, if 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 um a board manufacturer came out with a board that could the, the mask could only fit in one place it's exactly the same thing yeah um it would work for a certain amount of people but for an uh, other amount of people it wouldn't work because for me personally maybe i need to move the mask a little bit more forward and if you couldn't move it forward you're stuck in that position so, so tail stabilizers exactly the same thing yeah so so that's the same as if a company makes a, a wing fuse combo that you can't shim and you can't change it you're stuck it's just one size fits all and hopefully you like it and you wouldn't know if you if you didn't or or not because you couldn't change it you, so you just get me, used to you, you get used to setups too don't you you, you when you start writing yeah. something you, you get used to your setup, your board, your settings. And if you don't change it, you don't actually know if you like it better or worse because you've got no reference point to compare it to. It's just your yeah. setup. It's not until yeah. you actually ride something different and you're like, oh, my God, I was riding the worst settings yeah. or yeah, I was too much exactly. back foot or, you know, exactly. it, was, it was not not efficient as it could be <laughs> or whatever, whatever. So oh, you need, you need to keep experimenting. Feedback from one of our riders been foiling for I don't know how how long over two years, and tried shimming for the first time, and he was like, "What? You know, it's a completely different setup just from a shim, and that's exactly what it is. You put in one degree of shim, and it completely changes that foil, um, <clears throat> and it's to a point where, where where somebody will use a number two shim, and they're like, "No, nah, it's way too draggy. It's, it it feels like I'm going through molasses." And that's one degree of shim, and it makes such a big difference. Mm. So yeah, keep saying it. It's so important to 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 start, um, and not necessarily as soon as possible. I mean, obviously, you need to be able to ride the foil and, and have a a degree of understanding of a uh, degree of competent, competency on, on the foil um, before you can start shimming and start feeling these differences. Uh, for someone who's who's a complete newbie. They're not going to feel the difference between half degree shims, you know, one degree. They just trying to stand on the floor and just go in a straight line. So once you're starting to do your turns, your bottom turns, top turns, whatever, then you can start feel, you know, try this shim, try move it a little bit forward, move it a little bit back. Another thing as well, the reason that we were really adamant on making it a three pack and not making it available for individual purchase is because you might like one of the three that's fair enough but then if you want to start experimenting and chopping it and turning the 13 to an 11 or like which is which is what tom's been doing lately you need yeah. to have that original tail to reference it against and you, once because if you only have one tail and you like it and then you start to chop it you don't have the tail anymore you've got it something different so that was another reason to to encourage experimentation, encourage people to chop it, sand them down, ride the tail that they like, and then experiment against the other ones. Um, you know, so this, then you this, can this, have it in thirteen and a, and an eleven and a ten, if you want. You know, mm. and then so and, what, and like you said, you just shim it differently. If if it's a different foot pressure than you like, you can just yeah. shim it out. <coughs> so what I also encourage is. A lot of guys um, like the shiv and they find that the shunt has got just that too much front foot pressure. So if you're a lighter rider and you find that, then I suggest just taking the tail and just knocking off, start with like a millimeter. Just take off, off the trailing edge of the shunt because if you feel the shunt, you'll feel that there's just this little kick up at the back and you can just slowly start to remove that kick up and it'll you won't have as much front foot pressure so you won't end up with <coughs> excuse me you won't end up with um as neutral as the shiv but you can reduce the amount of front foot pressure if you find that the shunt has got too much so back to our graph the shunt excuse me 
back, the back to the graph. Has got, the shunt has got, um, especially towards the high end of the speed range, you'll find that your front pressure might be too much for you. Then you can take off a millimeter of that. If it's still too much, take off two millimeters. I wouldn't go more than three millimeters. But again, you'll be so amazed how much difference those last three millimeters on that trailing edge makes. It's 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 crazy. It's how three millimeters of that trailing edge can change that um, the feeling of that stabilizer. What what tips do yes. you have for guys wanting to do the chop shop and also purchasing? Would when would they choose a fourteen inch pack versus a thirteen inch pack, and then when would they want to make an eleven or a ten? Um, so I'm, I'm back, guys. The, Sorry, the guys who've got welcome back, Polly. So <laughs> the guys who have got um, the the skills are always pushing to get smaller and smaller and small smaller tail stabilizers. The guys who are lighter, um, I'm talking eighty kilos and less, can afford to go to smaller and smaller tail stabilizers. Us heavier guys, we tend to stick with the slightly bigger tails. Um, if I'm riding small, smaller conditions and I need less tail stabilizer, then I'll go to a 13, which is very rare. Um, I don't ride a 13. I ride a 14 nine times out of 10. But now take now Tom Tom Earl. He's he's going down to – he's chopped the tail down to an 11. We're actually starting to prototype 11s now. Um, <clears throat> so he's got the skill levels to ride such a small stabilizer. And – I can just imagine how it feels. You know, the drags even less, the efficiencies up. It must feel amazing because it's just so much more crisp. Um, it's faster. You, yeah, it must just feel great. So it all depends on your skill levels. If you find that your foil is really locked in and it's, you know, then go smaller style, tail stabilizer. Obviously, if you're doing high speed, you want locked in. If you if you're trying to ride in in the surf and you're trying to do sharp turns or aggressive turns and you've got a locked in foil it's not going to work so that's when i'd encourage to to start pulling out the hacksaw and start hacking away and and take it slow take off half inch you know off, off either side uh half inch off either side is is plenty um you can even take off less that take off quarter inch you know five six millimeters off either end Go for a foil, spend a session or two on it, and feel the difference and see. You know, is it? Uh, it takes time. It takes time to to get to that level and and to be able to feel the difference. Um, you know, you you need to put the hours in. Mm -hmm. so, Cliffy, I remember, I remember when they first came out and you were saying instead of chopping the ends off, which is going to take off those tips, which stop the yaw, um, that you should shorten the cord. Um, yes. by a millimetre at a time. Um, are yes. you still uh, advocating that or do you think that people are better off chopping the tips off? That's what I just said when you were away. Oh, sorry. Especially, especially, especially so on, on, on the shunt because the shunt has got quite a bit of camber on it. So if you find that the shiv is not enough and the shunt is too much, then I would take the shunt and, and as you say, on, on the trailing edge, just knock off a millimetre um go for a session to feel the difference put one or two different shims in and feel feel how it feels through the speed range and then see if you want to take two millimeters off i personally said uh, i wouldn't go more than three mils because then you start messing up the profile so yeah. but you can afford to go between yeah zero and three millimeters so cliff i imagine that when you take less it's similar to a front wing a, a, a tail stabilizer you take off the span it's going to be turning better but it's it, you're going to lose efficiency on the pump but then you're going to be able to turn the thing better and it's going to be faster and more efficient is that correct so, so those little tips on those three tail stabilizers remember how much they increase the yaw stability so if you get rid of those tips you're going to loosen up your yaw tremendously those so for guys like tips. for guys like eric who are really starting to push, you know, tail wafts and things. Um, I presume Eric, you know, would prefer um, not to have the tips because then he can throw the tail out. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so if, if you want less your stability, knock the tail tips off. If you want to keep that your stability, um, you can experiment with, with shortening the cord. Um, like I say, if you want something in between shiv and shunt, then yeah, take a little bit of that cord off. But I mean, the problem is once you've taken it off, it's off. You can't put it back on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be, be sure that um, that's what you want to do. And spend enough time on the tail that, that you can feel the difference. Yep, that's why we give three. So you could you could sacrifice have a sacrificial lamb, and not not blow yeah. the ones that you that you really like in. Yeah, yep. pull out the files, the grinders, and the whatever, and sit and shape. And you know, it depends which which way do you which which kind of foiling do you like? Do you like rear foot foiling? Then immediately I take you know I grab the shunt and I take three millimeters off. You know, immediately from from the, from the get go. So it depends on your weight. If you're a super weight, lightweight rider, if you're 50 kilos, then yeah, not, knock it off. You, you don't need as much tail stabilizer. If you're no one's guys, 50 kilos, Cliffy. You'd be surprised. <laughs> but yeah, we, we highly recommend uh, experimentation to, to tune to what you like. Um, uh, I think once you've got to that level where if you can pump and connect waves and you haven't played around with shimming, you're missing out on a, on a tremendous amount. <clears throat> um, I, I told you guys I had, I had feedback from a, a foiler in Hawaii who's been foiling for, two, for more than two years. And the first time he shimmed, it's like, it's a completely different foil. And, and, and that's why I say it's, it's so important to, to shim, set it 50 times. And if you, if you haven't tried it yet, um, I highly encourage it. Mm, yeah, not for just, sure. Not just shim. I, um, oh, tuning, sorry. tuning the the fuse the fuse size yeah, going from medium to short makes a huge difference, and then the tails. Again. Yep. Again, exactly. No, 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 no. That's another thing that you can add into the mix. Change the length of your fuselage length. You know that 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 changes everything again. Yep. Yep. The possibilities are endless. Obviously, the 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 shorter your the shorter your uh, fuse, the um, tighter your turning arc. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So you know, if you want to do sharper turns, uh, then well, theoretically, then you go with the shorter fuse. But I know that um, Adam was saying that he liked when he was uh, developing the the Viper, he preferred the medium. Um, uh, fuse than the um, than the short one because he felt that uh, the way that he was driving his turns uh, it uh, enabled him more control to be able to do those um, you know turns that he was doing. So um, it it doesn't necessarily mean you know sh the shorter one will be uh, will be better depending on how you ride. So another thing that that I found pretty amazing was I've been toe foiling on a on a 30 I think it's a 32 litre or 35 litre board with a medium fuselage and dropping down to a 14 litre board the swing weight is quite a similar thing to going to a shorter fuselage just because you don't have all the swing weight now so if you've got quite a big board try a shorter fuselage because it limens it up. I find with a big board and you've got very heavy swing weight, you know, it's dull and it's very slow and it, it doesn't turn as much. So put on a short diffuse lodge and you can liven up a big board quite a bit. Um, going from a 30 liter to a 14 liter board has been, it's wow. You know, you don't have, you've got like literally no swing weight and, and it, you feel so connected. Um, and I tried once with a, with, with a, with a short fuselage and it is just so sensitive because you don't have all that weight, you know, trying to move around. So again, an, another reason to, to experiment with different fuselage sizes. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Mass placements, boards, boards is a huge one. You guys ever Massive. ridden like the same setup on someone else's board and it feels like a completely different setup. It's just cause the board yep. is, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's, 
Yeah, and, and, and like I said on the other on another Q and A, I I always just change one variable at a time. So if it's, if it's going to be the shim, it's a shim. If it's a tail, it's a tail. But don't go changing too many things because you won't know what's what's affecting what. And yep. and I I try and I try and paddle out with a different setup every day. So whether it's a shim, the tail, the mast positioning, I'm always trying to experiment and see what I like the best and see what I'm missing. Different fuse length and there's like yeah, that's your whole year right there. Just just in changing shims, fuses, and the combinations of each and the mass positioning, that's like thousands of combinations potentially. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, I think the ability to be able to change like that, as you said before, Cliffy, is so important. It, it goes from making a, a setup that doesn't work for you at all into best ever. Mm-hmm. I've taken guys toe foiling and done exactly that. <clears throat> struggling, struggling, struggling. And I was just holding it and said, give me the board. Change a few things, chuck it back in the water and they're up and they're flying and they're like, what did you change, you know? So, yeah, critical that you, 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 you're you able to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and, and to feel the differences between, the, you know, you know your the, the way you've tweaked the foil. Also, I think that um, maybe unlike Toby, I like to find where my sweet spot is and then and then stay with it. Um, but that said, I might not have a, a sweet spot like you were saying before for every condition. So, you know, if it's this, uh, just like a surfer would, he might change from, you know, the bigger fins to smaller fins or, or you know, to twin fin from a thruster setup. Same sort of thing that uh, that we've got happening, you know, um, you know, the waves are four foot. I know I want to go for the shiv um, with uh, a zero, zero shim, um, shim, where if it's only two foot, I might have a, a two degree shim on the same tail. Um, but, you know, because I, I want um, more front foot pressure in that smaller, smaller wave so I can really hook into it. Um, uh, but like I said, unlike Toby, I, I, I don't want to always be changing it. Um, but I but I like to spend the time to get to where I know, yeah, that works for those conditions. I'm mm. set to uh, – now I know what I want for each of the d- different, you know, conditions that I'm likely to be affronted with. Uh, and, mm. and as you do that, you do learn, you know, what is making something work for you so that if something does get thrown at you, it's 15 foot or something, you go, well, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. I'll put that shim in um, and put that tail on. I, 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 it might not be exactly right because you don't get 15-foot waves every day, but at least you've gone in the right direction because of what you've done before. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for me, it's a bit of a pendulum. Like you go too far one side, too far the other, and then you can start to kind of like find your sweet spot and change within yeah. that little area and not be so wild with the changes. But like, just like you said, yeah. PB, just tune, 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 tune till you get I remember, the sweet spot. I'll, I'll, I'll I remember do, listening to one of Eric's podcasts and he was talking about the fact that he'd been trying something. Uh, it was a, it was a while back, so it wouldn't have been one of ours, but he'd been trying to get something right. Um, uh, and he was, you know, playing with it for ages and he just couldn't get it. And then he went, well, bugger this, I'm going to put it all the way forward and stick some stupid shim on that, like, he did a whole bunch of things that he thought wasn't going to work and he, and he he tried it and went, oh, it worked. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, yeah, the the beauty of, the, of being able to change stuff is to be able to change stuff and, and make a non-working foil into one that, you know, does exactly what you want it to do. And learning how to do that is really important. Mm-hmm. And and I would and, and just one more thing, um, suspend judgment for the first few waves when you do change something because you might hate it yeah. for the first couple and then you start to like it. <laughs> like, yeah, don't just get one wave and go, nah, shit. Yeah, you, you've got to get a couple before he, he doesn't he, click. And uh, yeah, I I remember you know he doesn't write our foils, but Hazmat, who I uh, foil a lot with. When he got his new setup that he's that he's writing now, um, 
for the first two or three waves, or it was actually more. He was that grumpy. He was spitting chips. If this, this thing doesn't work, I hate it. And then uh, uh, finally, I don't know, something happened, something clicked, and just suddenly it went from the worst board ever to the best ever. And he started just cranking off those turns that anybody who's followed Hazmat knows he can do. And um, literally that was from... Uh, from you know, from the full end of the spectrum where he just hated it, he was obviously used to whatever it was that his previous setup was uh, was providing him, uh, and and that's what he you know that's what he was used to. So that was what he was wanting out of that wing. Uh, but then suddenly, somewhere down the track, there he was able to understand what this new wing was bringing and actually take advantage of what that new wing was providing him. And, and make it like it was a step up. It mm. wasn't just mm. like, you know, Matt was doing this, you know, getting better, getting better, getting better, and then suddenly he's up here, you know. He's he, he's just like jumped a spot. And and the same <laughs> thing that you can do with our sort of star setup where you can just change things around and suddenly you go, oh, I, I'm a good foiler now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the progression, Eric's progression, 170. I wrote it for the first time, the 140 today. I can pump now. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I was pumping further on that thing than the Hyper 210, way less surface area. And I remember just pulling off the wave and just going, shit, this thing's just gliding forever. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. And then you just give it a little couple of pumps and then you glide again. You're not like flapping about like a freaking mad ch ch chicken trying to like keep the thing from stalling. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was yeah. I, I see, and then the other guys riding the progression, and you see like they're linking multiple waves. They couldn't do that before, and it's really good to see that. I, I think it's a perfectly named foil, the progression, because you're seeing guys progress, getting better and pumping more, and just enjoying it more. Um, yeah, and I spoke to some of the boys um, that rode the progression for the first time today, and they're like, yeah. It, I'm just uh, I'm I'm it's making the slop poor <laughs> conditions seem really fun so that's kind of what it's all about. Cliffy I just listened to your podcast with Eric um uh the one that's just come out and uh I I noticed you said that uh that something that was really touching to you was you know the feedback that you're getting um particularly on this wing uh, but obviously in general when you when you produce something uh, and then you know you get positive feedback um, you just must be amping about this wing God, wait. <laughs> no, it's been amazing it, it really has I mean even for myself personally um, that progression 170 has been so much fun uh, the 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 conditions that you can ride it in, the, the range of conditions. You know, I thought, you know, I wasn't going to be able to ride it in big conditions, but you can still have so much fun with it, even when, when the surf is a bit bigger. But um, feedback-wise, I mean, it's been limited because we only had a limited of, amount of foils go out. But the feedback that I've been getting has just been phenomenal. And, you know, the videos also show it. You know, that, that one video that um, it was uh, Mike Pedigo, he just comes off the back of the wave, he kicks, and he just glides. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> he goes like, forever, doesn't he? the motor, yeah. you know? And, yeah, so, so to, 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 to be getting all these dips and dabs of, of, of feedback has just been phenomenal. It's, yeah. It's, That's like it's we were surfing awesome. this spot today called Southwest Rocks, and for those of, it, of you who don't know, it's a, 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 a central New South Wales point break um, situation where, You've got a, um, a, a headland and then just a bay that gets filled in with sand uh, and makes, you know, a, a, a wave uh, that goes forever. Um, but uh, it was interesting because I ran into a guy who bought a um, Hyper 2 from us um, down at, um, at the Marimbula event uh, back in last November. Uh, and, and I saw him and he said... He said, oh, mate, I could see that you, I knew that you guys were riding the, the new hypers, I'm um, sorry, the new progressions because of the speed that you were going. 
Um, so, and literally he said that at the time that he was watching us, he wouldn't have been within a hundred meters of us, but you know, he could see just the, by what we were doing that we were on something different. Yeah. I was, I was, I was reading feedback from one of the guys who's, who's got a hyper two and he says he absolutely loves the four and he says he, he can't see how progression is going to be better than it. So I said, well, it depends on, you know, for myself, it, it depends on what conditions you're trying to achieve or what are you trying to achieve? If it's for speed, maybe not. But if it's for pump, the progression is just next level. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. The pump and the glide on that progression is... is Even the fat man can pump. <laughs> Video or <it> didn't happen. <laughs> it, it didn't happen then. <laughs> 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 yeah mm. a, a, that's a general consensus is guys are getting the longest longest you know link ups riding for the longest they ever have guys are leveling up their foiling which is great to hear but i still love the i still love the hyper too it, it's got a t higher top end you know, sometimes it's nice to just go really fast and yeah you have to you have to pump it in a different way to keep it going but I still love love the hyper twos as well. No hyper two I, on on a wind wing for me is still bliss. <laughs> love it. Well, it's good that we've got different wings for different uh, categories, um, and you know uh, <clears throat> the next uh, the next yeah, big yeah, one is uh, the guys. The guys will ask me, you know, do I take a progression one seventy or do I take a hyper two one seventy? I said, well. I took both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you were so impressed you bought the company. <laughs> yeah. I bought both. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, all right. Well, that's all I've got for today. You guys have any other questions or closing remarks other than start tuning? You, you don't know what you're missing out on. Yeah. Totally. Become a tune monkey so that you can become a pump monkey. <laughs> yeah. And coming yeah, from the and, and, not bumper, that's a big comment. And, and and it's great to have have the guys ask these questions. You know, I've actually been waiting for, to, you know, to answer that. Or what's the difference between just shimming and <clears throat> using the different tails? So, you know, if guys have got uh, questions, by all means, send us an email, send us a comment. Let mm. us know. Let us know what are you using, and yeah, if we can help you out tune your foil, um, yeah, send us an email. Yeah, you can uh, leave a comment on this video or on the forums, or just email us on the website info at Unifoil. Um, all our team foils, and we all know the gear, and we'll be happy to help you with some tuning instructions or tips or helping you get the most out of your setup. Isn't the bit, this the bit where we're supposed to say, hit the subscribe button, <laughs> ring the bell. Oh, my God. Where is it? No, it's smash the like Please button. No. Yeah, smash. Smash, That's smash, smash the smash like, that button. like button. <laughs> ring that bell. Subscribe. Are we going to get, are we going to get, um, you know, what are they called? Um, love. What do they call them? The love contributions. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, help, well this has been great. Thanks for having me, boys. All right, guys. Yep. Cheers. See you Cheers. on the next one. Cheers everybody. You. You. Bye.